it's keeping you wide nearby. Is I've got an infected toe. I was spitting feathers. The back has finally snapped. Hey up woodlanders, welcome to this week's woodlog. This morning we're on location in a little hamlet called Overseal. It's a friend of mine, Andy, who's just bought a bit of a small holding and um, he's got some willow. And this willow has been cut before and our Andy doesn't really know what to do with it because he's more farming minded than woodland minded and it's thrown up some long shoots and I'm thinking maybe I can get some willow binders out of it and then there's some up here some of it is definitely more basket weavers willow and the other stuff is more of a hybrid and I'm not sure if it was done as a bit of a screen for something I think the previous owners have got some ideas but we're we're not privy to all of that For some reason, this willow has been cut off at about three foot off the ground, about waist height. Now I don't know whether that's laziness on the part of the person that's done it before, or whether there was a specific reason for cutting it quite so high. Because I would have said, if you're going to get a willow bed, you might want to cut it down to about four to six inches off the ground. Keep finding gaps, so on. slipping in some fresh ones where there's a gap and ordinarily in hazel coppice you would get your own binders out of the hazel but as we're still struggling to get binder material out of it and willow lasts okay it's not as long as hazel but you really only want the bindings to last about couple, two or three years and then the hedge is regrown to the point where it's self-supported. You don't need that binders to bind it all together. Let's give them a little dressing and then have a counter then see how many we've got. Around this side is definitely much more weaving basket willow type stuff and we've got some interesting stem colours there, we've got some yellow. And that's different again. So we've got that one that's got a really fine leaf to it, and that one that's got a bit more of a goat willow style leaf to it. Sixteen bundles, 160 binders, that's not bad. Mission accomplished. Next stop, drop off peat steaks over at Twycross. Just had to grab another 10 steaks to complete the order. I thought I got enough, but I was a bundle short. Anyway, that's them done. I just got some from the ash trees. There was a little bit of stuff that's still alive, which is good, a few birch. Tomorrow is the start of the coppice season at Jeff's. If you've not heard of Jeff before, he's a landowner over at Rossiston and I cut his hazel coppice. So if you're all ready, I will see you at Jeff's in the morning at Rochester. Good morning. And so, the coppicing starts in earnest now. About 20 acres of woodland and this is part of it and we've been cutting here I've done three cuts so far we've just had a quick wander around and a good old woodland natter which has been great 
He's also showed me his new timber crane. He's got a farmy crane. Wow, they look good enough to eat, don't they then? Fantastic. I don't know what they are. Don't eat mushrooms if you don't know what they are. That's my top tip for today. But he's got his farmy crane, it fits to the back of his old Massey, and he said it worked fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that in action. That'll really help in the woodland toolkit. Okay, so we have uh, pretty much arrived at our coppice. In amongst these oaks, the ones with the green leaves on, that and the understory, that's all hazel. So we will start just here on the edge of these pines and get stuck in. I am looking for hedge lane stakes at five foot six and they're up to about up to a maximum of about two inches round then i'm looking for beam poles which will be eight foot long and they are about inch and a half round at the bottom i'll also be looking for weaving rods that i use for the hazel hurdle panels that i make everything else will either be charcoal and also timber for firewood production so what i do is i sell it out in six foot lengths to a guy who pr produces his own firewood. So things like that is just firewood really. On there, if you can get an eight foot one, they use them for den making. It's sort of a daunting process when you first start, but I am keen to get going into this one. And it'd be nice to think we can get all of this block cut this winter. And there's a couple of little blocks we've just explored Oh, one over that way, one over that way. Be nice to say we could get one of those knocked off. And then for next winter, there's a whole block over there that wants cut in that's a bit scrawny, a bit rough. If you're new to hazel coppice, this isn't really in cycle stuff. It's been cut before. I reckon it could be as long as maybe 12 to 15 years since this was last cut. If you listen to anything I've told you before, <laughs> keep listening, do as you're told. Hazel's better cut on a six or seven year rotation and having a lot less shade than is in here. The challenge we're going to have this year I think is going to be the wet. Two tackles down, we have got quite a bit done. Should we start at this location? This is the ride just here, and then done all this. We've marched through. This is what we walked through this morning, where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Tomorrow, I'm thinking it'd be nice just to work our way up through there get to that right edge and then I know I can just keep sweeping that way then. To give you an idea of what we've got out, we've got a few beam poles there, a few rods there for weavers, not many, tiny little charcoal pile, eight foot poles, then we've got some hedge lane stakes, 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 and then our pile of firewood which is all six foot long, too big for anything else, too wonky for other things. I think we've had a successful day and it's not been a full day either because I spent half the morning talking to Jeff like I do. It's not Jeff's fault, it's mine, I can't stop talking. Tomorrow here, what we'll do first thing, we will have a look at last year's coppice, the year before, and the year before that, and we'll explore how the hazel has recovered in the last three, two and one years. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's decidedly autumn today. We're on plus four degrees. It's jolly cold. As promised, I'll give you a little guided tour of last year's, last last year's, and last 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 year's coppice. First of all, we're going to get changed, and for that, you're going to have to close your eyes. So you can open your eyes again now. If you're into creating new videos on YouTube or social media, sometimes you like. Is anybody actually watching me? <laughs> Am I getting my little coppicing woodland message across? 
However, I had a lovely message this morning from Lance. Lance, thanks very much for your little email I had this morning. And he, Lance was very encouraging, saying that he really appreciates the videos, how it motivates him to get into his own woodland and manage that, and how he acknowledges at times those of us that put stuff on YouTube sometimes it can be a bit of an uphill struggle so thank you Lance for your particular encouragement you would not believe how timely that was sorry the weather's turned my hands are starting to go purple look that's what happens to my hands in the cold helmet first aid kit what happens to hazel coppice when you cut it and trying to get it right for the future this area here is what i first cut well chuffed with that this is two year old coppice and i'm guessing you may not be able to tell on camera some of this is up to about 10 or 11 foot 12 foot in places look at that red oak there look that is stunning but look at the colour on that. It's just amazing. Love that. Anyway, we're getting distracted. So near this, near the orchard, and you can see the height of some of these. My height is, so my head height is here. If we pan back, so we're looking at least 10 to 12 foot on those as well. That's two year growth. And then this was last year. So if you were following last year, this is what Hartwood took out the oak from here so you can see the thinning but the hazel one year growth anything between five six and seven foot high some of these on the edges let's come back again really well and strong i can't see any particular problems with browsing because there are monk jack up here the goal for this is hazel coppice with standards just noticed there jeff told me about a bit of sort of wind throw and you can see a couple of oaks in fact i see one snapped off there that's because of the heavy thin that we did there's some thinner oaks i've can pull them out there's one there and there's one snapped off just there that's a bit disappointing really i'll bear that in mind for the next thin gradually over the years if we could persist and try and get this right these oaks will come up to something the hazel will thrive and eventually we will have a really nice coppice with standard system in a woodland that at the moment is 25 years old this is this before this was simply pasture ground for animals i brought you up the top end of where i finished the other day we started over in that pile just there but we've worked all the way up here up to if I give you a spin round towards this ride just here and the plan for today is to start in this and to work that way and this is a triangle now it goes off to a point so my goal is to try and get this cut but I did realize the other day that there's a piece here this hazel here has never been cut I don't think can't tell it's a really gnarly mess we may have to save that for another year if you're watching last year I'm doing a very slightly different working up method this time so last year it was all cut 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 piles of wood everywhere on the floor I tend to try and stack things together I had sort of a dressing day then so I would do all this sort of job on a particular day on an in-cycle coppice you would possibly cut all morning and then dress up in the afternoon and that's all to do with how in-cycle coppice works it's just better to do it that way. 
Well, because this is overstored, your workflow tends to be a little bit different. And I might do a video about workflow because it's quite an interesting subject. I've decided when I run out of fuel, rather than just go back to the van and fuel up, I'll do a spot of dressing, get things bundled up, especially the steaks because they're something that gets sold pretty quickly because the hedge lanes want them now. It seems to make the job feel slower, <clears throat> but actually you don't save or gain anything. So anyway, it's just nice to have a little dress up. And sometimes it's better on the elbows if you don't do this business all day. Because it can give me, and I have had, tennis elbow before, so. And that's all because of the billock. So be careful out there, guys. I'm also trying to be disciplined in not going back to the van with an empty hand. So I've always got the chainsaw on my hands, but sometimes I've just got the chainsaw, which means I've got a spare hand. And of course, an empty hand is a wasted hand. Little progress shot. Basically, all this area here. We'll just keep ploughing on into that lot. I mean, they will get this done this afternoon. This short, small area just here, there's only about six or seven stools. And then we're off over there, then beyond the oaks. Finally, we've created a little bit of daylight. Feels like forever. <laughs> just so dark in here with the leaves still on. Um, but that's broke through to the right edge. A dilemma I've been thinking about all day is how do I extract? I keep thinking to myself, what's the best way? What's minimal time, minimal fuel, fastest response? I don't really want to carry everything out of my shoulders. So, um, between you and me, I've been looking at quad bikes. I don't know whether that's the answer. Hiring one maybe for a couple of days. If it doesn't come too wet, bring the tractor up for a day and extract everything I've cut so far. That's that's it, that's the plan. I knew if I talked it through with you, we would come up with a cunning plan. Forget the quad bike for now. This time of year is just fantastic for sunrise and sunset, so apologies for all the spam in the, in the sunrise and sunset. I ran out of fuel just down there so we didn't get very far. I've just bundled up 30 stakes. I've just had a quick quantify and I reckon there's about 15 days worth of cutting in there. I'm hoping it's less but I've sort of overestimated. Monday's got an interesting job. I've got to do a willow job which I think I might make that as a separate video. I'm going to try and get all the stakes out of here that I've cut so far so it's like you know empty trailer is a wasted trailer and all that. Drop that off at the woods, then I've got another 100 stakes and 100 binders for an order for Sunday, which will drop off on Sunday. I've got to load them up tonight, so we better crack on. It's about half past three, so it's not that late, but we lose the light in about an hour. So if I can get all this loaded up before it goes pitch dark. Good morning. And it has been raining all night again. It is so wet. It is ridiculous at the minute. I don't know how much more rain we can take. It's like a deluge. Having a bit of a difficult day today and yesterday. This is quite a long story, so I'm kind of trying to condense it. Short story, because of our family circumstances, the government help us out with a little bit extra every month so that we can basically buy our necessities of life. Because I'm a low income earner, they're changing from tax credits to universal credit they've told us that we've got to go for work interview so i've got to go next week and what they're going to do is assess my self-employment to see if it's viable and if they deem that my self-employment is not viable they stop your universal credit until you find work that they feel is viable and then they might give you some universal credit again So this is proper like stirred me up. Can I just uh, interrupt a little bit just there? We're about two weeks on now from my initial rant and fair to say I was spitting feathers. I went ranting on for about 20 minutes. 
and after reviewing the footage having two weeks of hindsight I decided to edit it right down and just give you the bare bones of where I was but things started to improve for us and these interview processes that went on although they're not ended yet it made the whole system become a lot clearer and the people that we dealt with were incredibly friendly and really kind of trying to help us make some progress with this application and now we're back up to a solid 80% today so um, you'll know I've recovered and we can carry on however I do realize that sometimes things happen in your life that aren't always great and they aren't always resolved quite as quickly and easily as this one seems to be so I hope and I honestly mean this I hope if your situation is a little bit on the miserable side at the moment that you find something that helps you to get through it and if all else fails you can just uh, hug a tree against it so anyway maybe i'm jumping the gun and maybe it will all be fine and i will update you next week on after the interview on how that's gone and i, I mean the bottom line is they want everyone off universal credit there's no money left in the pot um, and i sort of get all that that's fine you know i don't want to rely on handouts we've been fortunate i guess we've had 11 years of it and um for that i i am grateful it's helped us to survive we've had some pretty rough patches so of course with all that going on in the background my mind is anyhow at the minute trying to make sense of all that and let's go and get some coppice done and get stuck into some cutting there's some people in the world that are getting bombed and the kids are in hospital and the kids are being bombed in the hospital and you think ah that's my problems aren't really anything compared to that we're over there today i've got a little oak tree we knocked down the other day but ran out of fuel so we'll go and tidy that up and then we're hitting that over there We're listening to the radio at lunchtime. This week, Vernon Kay's doing a children in need challenge where he's got to run about 28 miles a day for four days. And there was a woman come on the radio. She was endeavouring to cheer him on. I think she was an ultra runner as well. And she said something that struck a chord with me. She said, what keeps you going? It's keeping your why nearby. In other words, when you're going through your toughest hour, keep all the reasons why you're doing something close in your mind. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. If I was to put a percentage on what I was feeling this morning, it might have been, it might have been 50%. And just a few words and I thought, man that's lifted my mood that has. Isn't it amazing how words can do that? Keep your eye nearby. Brilliant. Well, what a surprise. It's raining again. But today we've done alright, we've gone right from that top end, swept all the way down and we're about two rows away from the next ride. Good morning. 
today is an absolute stunner. Having a little bit of a late start this morning. Struggling to get going because the back has finally snapped and I've got my little corset on today holding me back together and make sure my spine doesn't collapse. Epsom salts and a corset it just does the trick, help me, help me out. And I'm not going to do so much lifting today. And then the other thing that I'm struggling with is I've got an infected toe. So I've got an ingrowing toenail, which again, it's not something I tend to suffer with, but a couple of three nights ago, I woke up in the night thinking my toe's sore. And I thought I was dreaming it. Deadly then since then, it's been getting worse. And now, if you're squeamish, look away now. It has gunge and the skin's broken. It's all right, you can look back now. That means I've got to soak it in salt water. And if it doesn't improve over the weekend, then I've got to go to the doctors. So I'm going to attack this last little bit just here. It'd be nice if today we can get this area finished which I think is achievable especially since I'm not taking out and dragging out the big stuff I'll give you a little 360 so we started over there and we worked up over into that far corner beyond that brash pile swept round to this bit here and then I forgot to circle round you can't really see where I've cut but all where I'm stood is cut and then this is today's project we'll play some music and we'll get cut in And so that marks lunch time. My toes are hurting me, but my back's doing okay with my corset on. Just tucked into this bit. The light is failing us. The sun's gone in and it's, what's that, 20 to 4. November, every day just gets darker can be a bit grim November. Now my fuel's out, I have got maybe a half an hour before it gets almost dark. I'll go and dress some hedge lane steaks, we'll lift a couple of them out of the woodland. I have to watch my back, because at the end of the day, my back gets tired, and that's what I'm trying to maul about with some of the stuff to get it out. Thank you Woodlanders for watching this week's Woodlog. I know I always say that, but I do generally appreciate all the messages, and we've had some personal messages, you're just really encouraging and that's uh, about a bit of a tricky week really so if you're able to keep your why nearby and i'll see you on the next wood log or whichever video comes out next see you soon